Issues like noise and health, visual impact and wildlife are often debated when discussing wind energy. But what are prejudices and what are facts when discussing the benefits of wind energy? Vestas welcomes the public debate about wind energy and we hope to provide factual inputs and balanced perspectives on the different issues. This can help shape the debate in ways that lead to better informed decisions about creating a greener future. Wind turbines do create sounds when the blades rotate, but how much? And what can be done to limit the sounds people are exposed to? When local communities want to limit the sounds from wind turbines that residents are exposed to, public authorities have a range of options available. In these cases, Vestas recommends relative noise limits that take into account local background noise levels. This can ensure minimal noise disturbance for wind turbine neighbors while allowing for more wind turbines to be located in relatively noisy areas, such as near industry or roads. These noise limits relative to background noise can also be supplemented with absolute maximum limits in areas of very low background noise, like in the countryside. It's important to acknowledge that the swooshing sound the blades make can bother some people. Most people don't live or work right next to a wind turbine, so the sound is typically measured at the nearest dwelling. In Denmark, the sound limit is 44 decibels outside the nearest dwelling, which would typically be some hundreds of meters away. That's somewhere between the sound your refrigerator makes and a normal conversation. Technology can also make a difference in terms of minimizing the sound from wind turbines. Vestas designs its blades to capture the maximum energy from the wind, while at the same time creating as little noise as possible. That's why one of Vestas' newest turbines, the V112, has two different sound modes to accommodate requirements in different circumstances. Some people are concerned about the potential health effects of low frequency and infrasound from wind turbines. But are there any health risks related to these sounds? The issue is not whether wind turbines emit low frequency or infrasound. They do. The issue is whether these sound emissions have negative health consequences. And the answer to this question is no, they don't. There are numerous scientifically based, peer-reviewed studies that examine the question of low frequency and infrasound impacts on human health. The science shows that there's no correlation between sound emissions in these ranges and negative health consequences. There is one study that alleges that there's a connection between low frequency and infrasound and human health impacts. That study, however, has been refuted by internationally respected scientists. These experts question the methodology that's used in this so-called study. For example, the statistically insignificant sample size of 10 self-selected families, the absence of a control group, and the fact that this study has never been published in a peer-reviewed journal. Some people don't like the way wind turbines look in the landscape. A valid question is, how can wind turbines blend better into the local surroundings? Vestas uses powerful software to show how wind parks will look in the surroundings. This can help position the turbines to minimize their visual impact. In the end though, we can't escape a simple truth. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Some people like the way wind turbines look, others don't. For example, one can position the turbines in an arcing line rather than a grid formation. This was done on a wind park off the coast of Copenhagen very successfully. With regard to aviation lights, for example, one can synchronize the lights so that they don't blink like an amusement park. There are also newer technologies, for example, that use radar that can detect when an aircraft is approaching and then automatically turn on the safety lights. This reduces the time that the lights are actually blinking to only those times when it's really needed. It's natural that people might be more concerned about things they're not familiar with than things they are familiar with. Interestingly, there's a study from Scotland that shows that as people became more familiar with the wind parks, they were less concerned about them than they thought they would be before the parks were actually installed. Wind turbines placed in natural environments will inevitably have some impact on wildlife 
primarily birds and bats. But how significant is this impact and what can be done to minimize it? Wind energy and its impact on the environment and wildlife is an issue that Vestas takes very seriously. Our view is that well-planned siting of wind turbines is the key to minimizing the impact on wildlife. Compared to other power generation technologies that require mining, drilling, refining, and transporting of fuel sources, wind energy is a very environmentally friendly power technology. Let's take a look at a Canadian study that shows different causes of bird fatalities. Here it shows very clearly that wind turbines have an exceedingly modest impact in terms of bird fatalities compared to other activities. And now, for example, it's a common practice to do environmental impact studies before a wind park is actually built. And these studies will look at things like bird populations in the area, their flight patterns, nesting, and feeding habits. And this is done as a way of learning how the natural environment already exists in the area and then minimizing the impact that we have when we place the turbines in their environment. There are also issues about wind turbines' impacts on bat populations. We have to acknowledge, however, that we know a lot less about these impacts than we do with regard to birds. We do know that bats tend to fly in low wind periods and that they're affected more by that fluctuating air pressure around the circulating blades more than direct impacts. But much more research is needed in order to find the best possible mitigation strategies to minimize the impacts that wind turbines have on bat populations.